Let's be honest, graphics programming is pretty intimidating. I should know, having drawn a triangle a thousand times. Oh, the pain. Yet, here we are. Blood, sweat, and tears. And a few weeks later, I have implemented six insane rendering techniques. You can say goodbye to this old look and hello to this. Let's start with my absolute favorite thing in the world. A clever trick to render the world at a 4 render distance where I approximate the height of the chunks in this massive subdivided mesh. You see, I want my game to be able to run on low performance toaster computers, aka my computer which is 10 years old. I cry. Now I can render 9 chunks in both directions with an okay performance, but I want to see mountains much further away than that. And this method will massively increase the render distance without exploding my computer. Step 1, create a massive subdivided dead mesh. Step 2, loop through the vertices and using the X and Z position, sample the world to get the height. I already have the functionality to sample the height of the world, so this was really easy to implement. This code alone wasn't perfect, because the height map would actually bleed into the voxel world, because, well, this is all a huge approximation. A simple solution was to lower the height of this height map the closer to the player we are. As you move around, you might notice the height of the distant terrain actually lowering down the closer you get. I also added a beautiful skybox that took all my knowledge of graphics programming to me. I am kidding, of course, I found a plugin for that. Thank you, Bevy Atmosphere. The only thing I did was to make a customizable day and night cycle, where you can have 10 minutes of daylight and 5 seconds of night. Uh, darkness. I just launched a Patreon page if you wanna support my work. Just a quick plug, check it out if you want. Next I wanted to improve the lighting of my voxel world. For the longest time my voxel has been rendered using the most basic lighting model. This is all the code. We have directional lights, but that's it. I didn't have any shadows implemented, not even specular lighting. This is not a big issue with the shader though. Since I'm using the Bevy game engine with Rust and I used their default renderer for my 3D models, lighting that affects the player or the crab does not affect my voxel terrain. So what I'm gonna have to do is learn physical based rendering. Alright, here we go again. Make a new Rust project. Add web GPU. Graphics programming tutorial. Here I come for the 10th time. My plan was to finish the web GPU tutorial, draw a triangle, draw a cube, all of that fun stuff, and then apply Learn OpenGL's PBR tutorial into my Rust project. And once I had unlocked the knowledge of PBR, I would finally be able to integrate Bevy's built in PBR shader into my voxel renderer. There was only one problem though. PBR is insanely hard to learn. I mean, there are books thousands of pages long explaining the theory and how to implement it. This is obviously something that is going to take weeks, if not months, to learn. So I stopped. Maybe I don't have to understand the details of how PBR works. In Bevy you can actually import external shader code, which means I can dump all of Bevy's built-in PBR shader functions and call those functions. I found out there's only one function you need. It's called PBR and it takes a PBR input. All I had to do was call this PBR function and figure out what data to pass in. What is the color, how metallic is the surface, how rough is the surface, etc. When the shader finally compiled, which took some time because it has 15 parameters. Of course it looked really wonky the first try, as I hadn't given any thought into the input data, but after some tweaking, it started looking decent. Light sources affecting the player now also affects the terrain. I was so happy that this was working. I don't want to see another triangle again. But then I realized... Yeah, the player is casting shadows on the terrain, that's great. But if you look really close, you might realize the terrain doesn't cast any shadows onto itself. I realized when I'm spawning the terrain, I added a component that opted this entity out of rendering the terrain onto the depth buffer. So, I removed this component and quickly realized there was a reason I was doing that. Bevy has a built-in depth rendering pass and it uses the position data from the meshes to draw onto the depth buffer. Wonderful! Makes sense! But of course, I do not use position vertices. I compress my voxel data into integers and unpack it in the shader for performance reasons. This is just one of the cons of using Bevy at the moment. Every now and then you're gonna run into issues that doesn't have an easy solution. I mean, the engine is like 3 years old, so don't expect it to have all all the features in the world. But I was able to find people that had the same issue, so it's probably a 
matter of time until we have a solution for this. I have three options to fix my shadow rendering. Number one, cave in and not use my own custom vertex format. Number two, make my own depth pre-pass render pipeline. That requires graphics programming, which is scary. Or three, not care about terrain shadows for the moment. I'm gonna do this last option for now. But I really wanted to see what it looks like with self-shadowing. So I tried option number one and this is what it looks like. Shadows on, shadows off, shadows on, shadows off, shadows on, shadows off. Looks good. I was browsing Bevis Git history and I found that two days ago they had just merged fog rendering. This was a while ago, so it's already released in 0 0.10 update. I didn't want to wait for the next patch, so I wanted to try it out. I copied over all the rendering files and I got it to work. This atmospheric fog looks amazing, but I don't know how to use this parameter. So, so when I update to Bevy 0.10, I'm gonna experiment a lot more with the fog. I wanted to implement level of detail to my chunks as another way to increase the render distance. And this is where I got stuck for two weeks. The hard part is not to generate a chunk mesh with a lower level of detail, that's just some basic maths. Instead of stepping 32 voxels for every chunk I create, if I want to half the detail I just step 16 voxels and scale up the quad by double the size. This is just a bunch of maths. The hard part was integrating level of detail to my chunk loading and unloading system, because now we need to remake chunks if we need to change the level of detail. And my current method of triggering a load and unload is in no way going to be able to support that so I had to completely rethink everything and I'm afraid my brain is going to melt trying to explain it but here we go loading chunk data is not hard it's just is this chunk in the range of the player yes load that data to trigger a mesh load it's the same thing is it in range yes but also we can only build a mesh if the data for that same position is there and not only that the meshing algorithm requires adjacent chunk data now that's of course a visual representation this is how the code actually looks like. I hope you like pasta because this this is a bit of a mess. There are so many things I need to keep track of. I don't want to load a mesh if I'm already building a mesh on another thread for example and there's a whole lot of other things I need to check for. And that's just a load mesh function. There's also the unload mesh and load data and unload data. There is no way I can implement level of detail into this spaghetti mess. So I scrapped everything. I banged my head against the keyboard for a week and this is what I ended up with. When I decide what render distance I want. Let's see a render distance of 2. I can assign a level of detail to each square. As my player moves, what I do is that I take the same hash map and put it on this new location and now we can see what changes needs to be made. These chunks need to load in, these chunks need to load out and the level of detail for these chunks just changed. I still need to make sure that the data exists and that I'm not already building what I'm trying to build etc. But I've cleaned up the API a lot. This topic could be a whole video on its own. So maybe it's a better day to talk about it but you might find it interesting anyway. In this video right here we can see multiple different level of details. The further out we go the less detailed the chunks are and as you will notice the meshes are a bit broken. Now I'm in the process of fixing this as we speak so uh, you know. It's not fully implemented yet what can I say. I wanna get this video out someday. One reason I actually wanted level of detail is so that I in the future can implement a world map like the game cube world. <laughs> I love this game. Take the lowest level level of detail and bam we got the world map. Uh, it's not in the game but uh, it will be easy to implement later on so that's cool. That's all I got to show. A big shout out to all my patreons we got. Uh, oh right I just launched it. Go check it out if you want to support me. Now you're free to go outside and touch some grass.